everyone, this is Jennifer Beamer, owner operator of Actually Dyed Art by Science, and this is the daily vlog, episode number 51. And today is going to be yet another retro expertly dyed video. <laughs> so, as in the last daily vlog, um, I filmed something four years ago, talked about it, and then never got around to being able to edit, upload to YouTube, and release it publicly. However, um, What's really interesting about this particular video is I have all the pieces still. So I'm talking about a, a supported spindle and a spinning wool that I bought a few years ago to try and learn a bit more about supported spindling and getting better at it. Because <laughs> I sort of hoped, well, maybe I'll do a tutorial in the future. <laughs> but I have to have the tools in order to practice and learn and blah, blah, blah. So, um, in this next video, um, you'll see my early thoughts, and um, it will be really great to then do another daily vlog where I talk a bit more, but I will show you again. <laughs> um, so this is my supported spindle, uh, Smaug, and as you can see, I have a whole load of yarn on it, which will be discussed in a Fiber Talk episode in the near future, or maybe I will have already put it out by then. Who knows? <laughs> I don't really schedule when I'm going to put the videos out. I just try to do a, a nice assortment of different types of topics to keep everything feeling fresh and new. Um, and I still have that spinning bowl, which I will discuss a bit more in the future. And I'm fairly certain both of these shops are still open and um, ready for business, so I'll also put their links in the description below. Anyway, um, if you like this next video and you want me to do sort of a four years in review, because as I said, I've spent this time learning how to use it more, and I understand more mechanically from like a physics point of view how these are vastly different um, in technique and the way that the spindles actually function uh, than um, the suspended ones. So that's usually what you see me doing, uh, drop spindling. <laughs> um, so if you want if you want me to discuss those differences, um, also put that in the comments below. If there are other spindle technologies that you want me to investigate, I do have a Turkish style spindle that was 3D printed. Uh, and given to me actually at a conference that I went to earlier this summer. So, um, you know, I can I can do these as well and uh, give you some daily vlog feedback at least, um, if not a tutorial, but we'll see. <laughs> uh, if you like this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. Um, any extra information, like I said, is going to be in the description below. If you have comments or feedback or troubleshooting, I can definitely do troubleshooting now because I have had a lot of practice. Uh, also put your um, uh, questions in the comments. So thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>
also on Etsy, and they have uh, some really cute ones to choose from. And for those of you who don't know me as well, uh, when I was in undergrad, my friend Jill, she sort of, I don't know, she was really into pirates, and you know, everybody loves pirates, because everything is better with pirates. And um, I just, I loved this particular model, so I had to have it. And again, this is this is handmade. The, the leather has been um, sort of embossed by hand and, and even painted. And there's uh, this little, like, man-made type fabric here. I'll have to post all these links below. But what it does is, even though, like, the, the inside of the bowl is high gloss and very shiny, um, the wood, because it has a grain, will cause a little bit of friction. So um, this little man-made type material inside doesn't have any of that um, wood grain. So when you are spinning in the bowl like this, the combination of this ball bearing and this, you know, highly glossed piece, of, I think it's acrylic, um, you'll get a really great spin time. And when I first started spinning, I originally got the crowned tip, so you can see inside there's a little jewel. I originally got this because the idea was, um, I'm not very good at long draw, as I've said like a bazillion times, you all know that by now. I wanted to be able to have the option to do a half hitch here at the top. like that. And I got to spinning with the little sample that they sent using this half hitch and I think I got two twirls in and decided, you know what, this is really unruly, I can do better. And um, I ended up spinning the vast majority of this little sample with some kind of mystery, well I don't know what it is. Um, I ended up spinning the rest of this using a point of contract point of contact draw and I have more pictures of this I think available on Ravelry yeah I posted them there had to access my mind palace where I have all that information stored away <laughs> alright so um, I I got done with the sample really liked how it turned out and decided you know what else can I spin that I'm not you know I don't have earmarked for a project or a video or, you know, just something. <laughs> um, I have this huge Cormo fleece at home. It's actually a cross fleece. And um, I didn't have any plans for it. It was just my first whole fleece that I processed. So when I was home for the holidays, I pretty much carded up about mm, not quite 100 grams of it and then I shipped it to Korea because I'm like, well, maybe I'll use it for something. And I did, and I decided to spin up the Cormo. Now, what I was trying to do was actually, like, probably too many things at once, but it turned out <laughs> just fine. But um, I decided to do something that Amy King mentioned in the twist issue of Ply that I, that I recently reviewed. She suggests twisting with enough spin to sort of make the single hold together and then to then use the ply twist to add stability and durability to your yarn and that was really resonating with me on the subject of Cormo because it's an extremely springy and bouncy wool and I wanted to keep that soft squishiness that is so desirable about this type of fiber so um, you know, having having my new little tool here, you know, practicing using a uh, one hand draw. Okay, this was really exciting for me. <laughs> I was drawing it out as I as I was twirling my my spindle here, and um, I ended up producing these two really fantastic skeins of yarn. I think it's around 440 yards for for both of these, and um, I'm going to talk about this on the blog and in a, in a future video probably uh, when I talk about Cormo. And uh, it turned out that not only was I able to make some really nice soft squishy yarn, there was some interesting things that I learned about uh, twist and grist 
which are important if you want to have very consistent skeins from one to the next when you're making a large project. This is especially the case. So I was really excited when this experiment really panned out because I learned so much about just drawing with a single hand, which is important if you're going to get used to drawing with one hand with long draw, but I also was able to get better acquainted here with my supported spin ball, which was really the goal, was <laughs> to get used to this little tool. And I have silk on here because I thought, you know, why not? Silk doesn't necessarily need to be weighted or anything like that, so I decided that if I um, if I drafted out the silk enough and added the twist, this could actually be a really great beginner way to learn how to use the supported spindle with a single hand rather than two, because you've already drafted the fiber out and all you have to do is add twist. And with something like silk, the drafted out bits stay together really well. So, um, that idea is still brewing. We'll see how that turns out. Anyway, so I showed off my little my little tools that I'm super excited about, and I'll probably get maybe one more before I go to the UK for school. <laughs> because I won't be able to take any of my spinning wheels, and I have to be able to spin like at least eight different things um, at the same time. I'll probably need more spindles. So, uh, yeah, maybe there will be another purchase order in my future. <laughs> anyway, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have suggestions for future videos, I would love to hear your ideas. So post those below too. And thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my channel. I feel it here every single time. Thanks for watching.